As the world's big conventional oil fields begin to plateau and decline, more and more oil is coming from deep water platforms like Perdita, the deepest of them all in 8,000 feet of water. So right now we're sitting on the Perdido helideck and we're 200 miles south of Galveston. The whole structure is about 500 feet and it's just floating in the water. So we're on what's called a spar and a spar is basically a can, a floating can if you want to think about it. There's a weight on the bottom of it okay. that, that holds it. So the can's held down by a, by big, a big weight. weight. Okay. And it just, it's like a buoy. It's just floating there. And then uh, this whole facility sits on top of that floating can. So when you leased this, did you even know you could drill this deep? No, no, we didn't have all the technology we needed at that point in time. How long did it take to get this facility in place? From the time we purchased the lease, we purchased the lease to the time we got first production in March, it was 14 years. 14 years. Yeah. Now, a big chunk of that time was doing the evaluation. And we started work on actually building what you're seeing today in late 2006. Okay. So, so 10 years from first thought to 2006, yeah. getting all that stuff done. Right. And then from six to today was really... Now, in a project like this, you had to do a lot of research because you're dealing with so many serial number one. Oh, yeah, projects. your first, no, first, first. Nobody's ever tried to pump, separate oil and gas on the seafloor and pump it up. So we spent a good bit of that time studying that and making that a viable system. Big barge here, what's that doing? So what you see, this is one of our supply vessels. Okay. And uh, right now she's unloading diesel. That's used to run our cranes. Uh, when we don't have gas, we can run our turbines on that. Gotcha. I don't feel any movement right now. No, the seas are pretty calm. The seas are calm. You see you don't have much wave. But even in, in real heavy seas, you don't get much movement with the spar. So in the event of a hurricane, what goes on out here? We batten everything down, tie it down, we'll make sure everything's tied in, and then we evacuate. Okay. But Perdido's designed to where seas can actually come over the deck we're at now. The seas can, the seas don't ever get this high. Absolutely, they can. How many people are out here at any one time? We have beds for 172. And we stay at 172 day in, day out. Okay. We have spent a little over 11 million man hours without a lost time accident. 11 million man 11 hours. 11 million man hours. That's fantastic. Give me a feel for the volume. What kind of daily production do you expect? So the spar is designed for 100,000 barrels of oil a day and 200 million cubic feet of gas a day. All this is done with, I mean, remotely operated vehicles. And so we have an ROV on board here, and we send it down to do work, to do inspections. It can close valves, open valves. But we can also open and close valves remotely from our control room. So right now we're in the control room for, for Perdido. These gentlemen are monitoring the topsides facilities and the, the subsea wells. And we also monitor the position of the spar. And this is where we'd control the movement of the spar. So we actually have one of our engineers in New Orleans that we're connected to uh, remotely, and he can monitor, and he can, he's in communication with us. Uh, in fact, he rotates and he works out here some. As the platforms we're getting to are more and more remote, right. I think it's more critical. We're completely full out here all the time. It's tough to get help out here if you needed it, Yeah. but that's the way to do it. We, we, uh, we work around barriers, so we, we evaluate any potential hazard, and we look at putting barriers in place to make sure that instant cannot occur. Yeah. If it does occur, then we look at the recovery measures. You know, the human element's still there. Mm -hmm. We've got lots of really good equipment that protects us, but if things line up just right, you know, terrible things can happen. So you, you, you do your best to make sure that those things don't happen. Sure. It's expensive, uh, there's financial risk, You've been out here many years before this came online. Why do it? I mean, what's, why march out here into deep water and take the risk? Because the hard oil is all that's left. The easy yeah. stuff people got years ago. And so you're getting into harsh environments. And, and this is a harsh environment. Mm -hmm. The deep water is a harsh environment. In that lower tertiary, you know, there's billions of barrels of oil in the Gulf of Mexico, still in a very stable environment 
for us to get. Currently, the Gulf of Mexico provides 30% of U.S.'s domestic production. Mm. And uh, say a quarter of U.S.'s production comes from the deep water leases. Right. Perdido's gonna last another 20 years. You know, 20, 25 years is what it's forecast to. And we'll need that oil. Global oil demand continues to rise while supply becomes more difficult and more expensive. What does this mean for the future of oil? It's an issue we explore in the film.